I'm worried that I didn't actually press record while I harvested all of our stinging nettle. And I do mean all of our stinging nettle. But uh, we had... <laughs> if you are harvesting stinging nettle and you want to preserve the patch, because stinging nettle is quite good for pollinators, it makes a great fertilizer, you can eat it, you can make tea out of it, it it's, it's a good plant, but it, it hurts so bad if you touch it. And because ours was growing in, ours was growing along the alley, so potentially people, children, would be walking around there. So I wanted to I wanted to make sure that I pulled as much of it as I could. Um, I, probably some will grow back because I definitely didn't get all the roots. But instead of just instead of just pulling the to the tops of it off, unless you could if you wanted to keep using the plant. I pulled as much as I could. It's not a good place for stinging nettle, but um, I definitely remember I had, I have two of these. I took one of them off because it, it's hard to be dexterous in these, but I got these gloves this year so I could take care of our very prickly raspberries and they worked so well for stinging nettle, like no stinks, which is good because it, I'm really sensitive, but so here we have the stinging nettle. Uh, I think I will at least chop off the root section and maybe maybe just take the leaves and leave the stumps. But first we gotta make it so that we can handle it. Supposedly, if you just rinse it, then it's no longer stingy. I don't really trust that, so I'll probably blanch it before I do a lot of handling of it because I don't wanna deal with this. I don't wanna get stung today. <laughs> Don't want you to sting me. Okay, I should probably put it away before I hit myself in the face with it. But yeah, it's not a huge haul. It's not, it's not, I think I might have just lucked out on uh, not catching it at the right angle there because I think it did technically touch my skin. Ah, what are you? There's a big bug crawling across my floor. And by big, I mean not big. It's a small one. It's a small little millipede or centipede. I don't know. It's bug. Many, many years ago, well over 10 years ago, my partner and I joined a CSA for our first time. And I did a lot of research and the CSA that I selected, I selected because it had a really long season and it had a really diverse selection. And the first box had stingy nettles, sorrel, and ramps. And I think that was my first like what have I gotten myself into? I don't know what to do with any of these. So I just searched for those ingredients and I found a recipe for soup. I cannot find it again. I have looked. I cannot find it again. Either that or I doctored it a lot. So it's like, yeah, very different from any of the ones that I can find. And I was vegan at the time. So it was this beautiful vegan stinging nettle ramp and sorrel soup. And I think I used, I think it also had onion and coconut cream. I'm really not, I don't remember what else it had, but it was so good. And it's like, all I can think about in the springtime is I gotta, I gotta remake this recipe. It was so good. And to that end, I started planting sorrel in my garden. So we have sorrel. And also to those ends, I planted ramps. Now ramps, if you live near the woods in the right area of the country, you might be lucky enough just to find them growing wild. I don't know of a place where they're growing wild near me. And even then, especially if it's in a public place, you really want to make sure that you're not over harvesting it because you want your ramps to come back every, every year. And so I did order some ramps off of Etsy a few years ago. They arrived super slimy <laughs> and I really didn't think that they were even gonna grow, but they did. So I do technically have ramps, but especially because this is very much establishing, I don't have a ton of them. They're still getting established. I don't really have woodland. So they're kind of in semi shaded areas of my garden and uh, they're, they're doing okay. They're doing a lot better than I thought they would. But you really want to like wait until you find a, a ramp with three leaves, is what I've read. There, I could be wrong, but I've read that you wanna find one with three leaves and just take the one leaf because you really wanna make sure that, that plant doesn't get over harvested, especially 
in places where they're very rare. <laughs> they don't grow here and I am growing them. So I want to wait until I find three leaves. Sadly, all of my other amps only have two leaves, which makes me sad because they're just so bar garlicky, oniony. Like something in that soup is really buttery too. And I don't know if it was the ramps or if I added some vegan butter to it. At any rate, sadly we will not have ramps. I think I'll go outside and harvest some walking onions just so we can have some of that spring onion goodness. And we'll add, we'll add a lot of butter and garlic to it. And maybe a whole other like bulb onion. <sighs> I'm really excited about the soup. And another thing that I think will be really good in this soup is some spinach. Um, I don't have spinach growing right now, but I do have perpetual spinach growing right now, which is a chard, but it tastes like spinach, and uh, I think it'll be good. All right, let's continue foraging. Can you even call it foraging when it, well, yeah, because I think there's stinging nettles involved. We can call it foraging. <laughs> I don't know if picking the sorrel and the perpetual spinach that I planted myself counts. I know it doesn't count. Um, and I don't know that picking the ramps that I planted myself would count, but stinging nettle, it counts. This is gonna be a foraged soup. garlic planted all along here I think a few years ago and I missed some. In here is a bunch of little garlics but because they've never been separated they're not worth digging up because they're going to be really small but you can still use the leaves and they have a lovely garlicky flavor. So I've got a bunch of onions and a bunch of garlic. Ugh, might as well grab more garlic. Can't have enough. Not in this soup. them but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop them in the water. These should be clean so I should be able to use the water for some nettle tea. I'm going to pop these in the water until they're like softened and then drain it and save the water for nettle tea. While this is boiling. I'm going to blow them back up. are so hard to get on. <sighs> ah. I think that this is, I think this is good. not looking as green as it does in person. It looks like 
electro cooler green. Like it's very, very vibrant. Very vibrant. This is looking really dull on camera, but this is some very green liquid that you can drink. Once it cools down, you can probably water your plants with it. Uh, but yeah, nettle tea. A good way to bulk the soup up would be to add a potato and then just blitz it up with an immersion blender or transfer it to a blender and mix it up there. So a potato would be great. We don't actually have any potatoes right now because I just used up all my potatoes for a soup earlier this week because it is a very, very much a soup week. Um, so what I might do to bulk it up instead is I might add a can of chickpeas or garbanzo beans and blitz that up because I find that it doesn't really add much flavor, but it gives it more protein. Can maybe even do some leftover rice and some chickpeas to make it more of a complete protein and even heartier. Uh, I kind of like the soup being a little on the light side, so I'll probably just do garbanzo beans. And any spring vegetables that you can have, you could add in to bulk this up. We have some carrots, which I may add, um, but they'll need a longer cooking time. So I think I'll start boiling a little, some carrots now, and then maybe we can saute up some of this onion and garlic, and then add everything together. Yes. She's crispy. Now let's chuck in some bouillon. Um, I'm going to add some better than bouillon and I'll use the chicken one. And this is actually chicken. This soup is not vegan. If that is something that you're looking for, you can use vegetable stock, a vegetable bouillon, you know, swap that out. And we'll save the coconut milk for the end. And we will pop in the garbanzo beans now. But first we must rinse off all the farts. So you just wanna, oh no, it's dripping. Rinse off, or you can, you know, separate the aquafaba and use it for something else, or just rinse it. This soup's also crying out for some nutritional yeast. I don't have any, but if you have nutritional yeast, add some nooch. So I'm really going to just cook this until the carrots are soft. Oh no, I was wondering what that smell was because it kind of smelled like something was roasting, not boiling. I had the wrong burner on and I was burning, <laughs> burning my nettles a little bit. So this will be an interesting soup. Um, but on the plus side, it smells good. And I didn't burn, I didn't turn on any of the burners with the plastic on top. So, oh nice. Also, apologies for the dishwasher. She's being noisy today. But at least she's doing her job. She works hard. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we should call it, make a dishwasher a he. Because, uh, gotta reverse some gender roles. He's working hard. He does a good job. But he's very noisy today. The verdict is in. It is delicious. It tastes like garlic naan, which is weird, but oh, buttery garlic naan. It's so good. I kind of just want to make some naan bread to go with it because it's, oh, it's so, it's so good. My only complaint is that there's not enough. <laughs> I'm so excited to eat this later. All right, yum. I had my partner pick up a take and bake baguette from the grocery store because I just did not have the energy to make the fresh bread that I thought the soup deserved. But honestly, I kind of didn't need the bread because uh, it tasted so good and honestly so bready 
even without the bread. I don't know how much of that was because I added, I think I added some butter and I didn't manage to record that. I added some butter and uh, I think even the accidental roasting of the nettles gave it a little something extra. Adding that culantro, and yes, I do mean culantro. It's not quite the same as cilantro. It tastes the same, but it's a lot heartier. It doesn't bolt. It looks totally different. And just adding some of that to it just made it oh, so, so good. And the culantro and the sorrel play really nicely together because the sorrel is really lemony and fresh and zingy and it just plays so nicely with the cilantro taste of the culantro. Oh, so good. Oh, one thing that I would do differently is I left the stems of my stinging nettle because I didn't really want to fuss with it once I had cooked it down and also because I didn't have very much but it did leave like some long fibers even after I put it through the immersion blender so in the future maybe don't maybe maybe don't keep the stems maybe just take the leaves because it's uh, it's not really textually worth it but it was the most delicious soup and of course it's disappeared so quickly but thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!